Okay, so before we go any further, let's save this live set. I'll just use Command S on Mac or Control S on Windows. And um, I'm going to save it here. You can save it in whatever dedicated folder you want to use. And I'm going to call it Essentials. I'm just going to quickly stop all clips by clicking the Back to Arrangement button. And let's talk about clip types. There are actually three clip types audio clips, MIDI clips, and live clips. And live clips are audio or MIDI clips safe with the original tracks devices. And you can always recognize them by the ending ALC. I've actually saved two of those as well for you. They're both MIDI clips. So let's just load this one. Takes a little bit longer. Okay, here you see. You have the MIDI clip and when you click on the header of the track you can see it also has a drum rack saved with it. So that can be really handy. Okay, let's get back to audio clips. You can use uncompressed and compressed audio files. Uncompressed files that Live accepts are WAV files and AIFF files. WAV files are the standard Windows AIFF on Mac. And then there's also Sound Designer 2 files that you can use that's also a Mac format. And um, for compressed files, you can use MP3, AAC, Og Vorbis, Og FLAC, and FLAC files. To use compressed files in live, they need to be decoded first. And that is written into the decoding cache. And you can make settings for that in the preferences under file folder. Here you see the decoding cache. You can set what the minimum free space on your hard disk should be. You can also set the maximum cache size. By default, it's set to off, but you can you know, just turn it on and choose whatever you, size you think you need. And when it becomes too full, you can click on cleanup. That means all the files that are not within the current live set are actually deleted from the cache. And you can also set the folder location for your cache here. Just click on browse and then choose wherever you want. Okay. If you want to use compressed files, especially with a variable bitrate, you have to install QuickTime. Samples in live, as I already mentioned before, are also only referenced, which means they're not saved within the live set but you have to make sure that you save everything correctly, then they would be saved within the samples folder in live when you record them or when you click on collect all and save. Live only stores the location where it was found or added from and that is recalled. So it's not saved directly into the live set to keep the size smaller. And as soon as a, an audio file is added to live and it has to be analyzed and an analysis file is written um, that has the same name plus the extension ASD. And for example, here you can see everything that has the little check here is already been analyzed and has an ASD file in that same folder. It's just not shown in the browser, but you would see that in the Windows Explorer or in Max Finder. So um, that's a MIDI clip, a live clip. That is a MIDI clip. Here you see a, that that's what MIDI clips look like. MIDI clips contain MIDI files and they're actually imported into the live set. So as soon as you've imported it, the original file outside of live is not 
change in any way at all. And uh, MIDI files are more like sheet music. So you've got only data and no sound. And those are node on and off messages, velocity, and also MIDI CCs, continuous controller messages. They're used for envelopes. And here you can also see, you can enlarge the clip view. And the clip view itself exists for audio and MIDI clips, of course, and uh, it's used to adjust clip parameters and make changes and edit clips. Both types, so um, MIDI and audio clips, have a clip box, which you can see here. They all have the um, activator switch, which can be used to activate or deactivate the clip. Or you can also use the zero on your computer keyboard, as long as the clip is selected, obviously, which means the clip view is showing. Turn it on and off. Or you can change the color here as well. You can change it exactly like it works in the global time signature. The only difference is it only changes how things are displayed in the editor. Here you see, for example, it's one bar long. When I change that, it's now four bars long. The clip itself stays the same. And here, just to show you here, the clip box and its controls are the same also for audio clips. Then another thing both types of clips have in common can be found in the sample or notes box. Here you've got the samples box and those are the settings. You can set the start and end of a clip and if it's looped you can also set the loop position, beginning of it and the length in there. You can either just type that in, for example here, let's say we want to start at bar 3. And uh, for warped clips and MIDI clips, it's uh, shown in bars, beats and ticks. If it was an unwarped clip, it would show minutes, seconds and milliseconds. So you can just either type something in or click and drag as well, or you can just drag Oops. The start marker here. Same works with the end marker. Now you see it stops, ends at six, bar six. And the same goes for the loop settings. It's generally, you know, the fastest way to just drag. So start here, and then here. They don't have to be the same. You can, for example, also say that it should start at bar one and the loop starts at bar three. Okay. And that really is the same for MIDI clips as well, as you can see here. So what you can also do in both, when you see this magnifying glass, glass you can either, you, when you drag down, you enlarge the view, meaning you zoom, you can zoom in, zoom out, this works with up. When you've zoomed in, you can do left and right movements to change the position of what you see. You can do the same thing in the clip overview or drag the endings or beginning as it actually was. Same works for example. Here you see, for example, that's the part that's looped. That's why it's highlighted. And if you, for example, just want to go to that part, do that. Same way.